My mini egg rainbow cake tastes so good and its colourful decoration makes it a spectacular centrepiece. So I've got the butter in the bowl of a stand mixer and we'll be adding the caster sugar. It's really important that the butter is soft because it means it's easier to mix it in with the sugar and to add the other ingredients to it. And then creaming these together on a medium speed until light and fluffy. I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste to give it a really rich vanilla flavour. And then I'm going to mix that in. I'm using a fork, I'm going to beat the eggs in the jug just so it's easier to add them into the mixture. I'm going to add them to the butter mixture a little bit at a time. If the mixture curdles, like it has a little bit here, it's really easy to resolve by just adding a tablespoon of flour into the mixture and mixing it. So the next thing I'm adding is the Greek yoghurt. And this gives the cake a real tanginess, which works really well with the sweet frosting. And then I'm going to add half the flour and then give it a mix. One little pinch of salt. And then the rest of the flour. So now the mixture is thick and glossy, I'm just going to add a splash of milk to help loosen it up so it's easier to spread into the tin. Now I've mixed in the milk, the mixture is ready to go into the tin. Now I'm just using one tin to make this cake because I think it's easier because I'm going to bake the one cake and then slice it into three layers. It means that the layers fit really well on top of each other and it also saves on the washing up. I'm just going to use the top of the spatula to make sure it's right into the edges so it rises evenly. And then that's ready to go into the preheated oven for about an hour and ten minutes at 160 degrees. So I've taken the cake out of the oven, left it to cool and taken it out of its tin, so now I'm going to start on the buttercream. I'm going to use an electric whisk just to even out the butter and make it easy to incorporate the icing sugar. So I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons at a time of icing sugar. If you add it all in one go, you'll get a big icing sugar cloud, which, although maybe fun, is a bit messy and impractical. And then use the whisk to just mix it together. Add the last bit of icing sugar and then whisk it until it's light and fluffy because you want as much air in there as you can. So I'm looking for a really light fluffy consistency which is about what we've got here. I'm going to add the white chocolate which has been melting over Bain Marie to help loosen it up a little bit. Pour it into the buttercream and whisk to combine. So now you've got a nice velvety smooth icing which holds its shape on the spoon which means it's ready to use. So I've left this cake to cool for about an hour because it's really important that it's stone cold before you put the icing on because otherwise it will melt and it won't hold together well. And you want the cake to sit flat on the cake stand so you have to just even off the top. It's just an easy way of getting a professional finish. I'm going to turn it over and the next thing I'm going to do is divide this cake into three even layers. I find the easiest way to do this is using a ruler. This cake is six centimetres high, which is convenient. So I'm going to score a little mark at the two centimetre and the four centimetre mark. If you just gently score a line around the whole cake, which will act as a guide when I come to cutting it all the way through at the end. Just carefully slice, getting closer to the middle each time. So I've cut the top layer, and then I'm going to cut the final layer into two. Now the cake is sliced into three even rounds. And then I'm just going to set those to one side whilst I get on with icing the cake. So I'm going to take the base layer of my cake and what I always do with my icing before I put it on is just divide it into four in the bowl. So you've got a quarter for each inside layer, one for the crumb coat and one for the final coat and you know you're not going to run out. Just put one quarter of the icing to the middle of this layer and then spread it right to the edges of the cake. And then put the second layer carefully on top of that one, on top with another quarter of icing. and then top that with the final layer. You can see it's covered in a lot of crumbs. It doesn't matter because we're putting a crumb coat on to seal them all in. So when you put the final layer of icing on, you won't even know that they were there. So I push it right to the edges of the cake and then just spread it gently right around till the whole cake is covered in a really thin layer. So I'm going to place this into the fridge for about 20 to 30 minutes just so the icing can harden before I put the final layer on. 
So I've taken the cake out of the fridge and the crumb coat has set. So now I'm gonna cover the cake with the remaining buttercream. Just spoon the icing all over the top of the cake. So you just wanna cover the sides and top of the cake liberally in the white icing. You want the icing to be just thick enough that the eggs will stick into it and not fall off straight away. I'm gonna be decorating the whole sides of this cake with a rainbow of mini eggs. So I start with the purple eggs and just place two next to each other on the side of the cake. And then moving along the lining colour, alternating in pairs until the whole cake is finished. It's quite time consuming, but the effect at the end is quite spectacular. Now the way the colour moves around this cake is by gently moving the eggs along one each time and keep working around. So I've finished covering the sides of the cake with the mini eggs and I've just arranged upright eggs around the top. I'm just gonna finish the cake by taking three coloured eggs and placing them right into the centre. And there you have it, a colourful layer cake topped with a white chocolate icing and a rainbow of chocolate eggs. Mm -hmm.